Welcome back to the Touchline here on Y254. It is time for our first interview here on the show. And today we are glad to host Sami Ombisa, who was formerly of FC Leopards, and is here to talk to us about sports and wellness. It is something that has not happened here in the country for a very long time. It has been happening in the outside world because sports on the outside world is very advanced. But back here at home, we are still in the knee stages. We are still in the crawling stages, if I put it right. Sami, welcome to Y254. Thank I never know. knew that you played for FC Leopards until one of our producers, Xavier, told me that you were a former FC Leopards player. But before we talk much more about that, please introduce yourself to us. Who is Sami Ombisa? Okay, Sami Ombisa is uh, currently a wellness consultant where in wellness we deal with matters of mental health, mm -hmm. physical health, yeah. and uh, the, the emotional health. And so therefore we, we help people to try and connect these three so that they can achieve their goals at individual, at family, at corporate, and at national level. Yeah. Uh, Sami Ombisa has been in sports for quite a long time because I started my uh, sporting career back then in Kakamega High School, the Green Commandos, wow. where we were the uh, Nationals champions. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on to Super League, then went to the Premier League. Before then, it became Premier League. And yes. finally got myself playing for the National Under-20 team, which was my climax. Yeah. And at the moment also, I came to play with the FC Leopards. Mm -hmm. And this was the highest level of uh, football that I was able to to play at. Yeah, which year was that you played for FC Leopards? I played for FC Leopards between 20, uh, 2003 and 2004. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and um, it was a time when it was very difficult because it was just after mm -hmm. a very powerful chairman who yes. had really funded the team and then the team had no chairman mm -hmm. who was very um, specific mm -hmm. and uh, we really fought hard to keep the team going. Yes. Players going without salaries, the management going without salaries, and there was no insurance, there, was no, there were no contracts. Mm -hmm. But out of the willingness to further our footballing career, we stuck on there and uh, did whatever we could do. Yeah. Yes. Tough times. I re I re tough times. I remember we played for 2004. Four years later, FC Leopards was relegated yes. from the Kenyan Premier League and it was brought back by legendary, the late George Wasakala, mm -hmm. brought it back with the Gilbert Celebua, mm -hmm. bringing the FC Leopards. Do you miss playing back then and now? <laughs> <laughs> of, of course, um, yeah. also age catches up. Yes. And, um, you, you'd wish to be there, but mm -hmm. some things you can't do now. Like, mm -hmm. for example, I can't imagine being mm -hmm. between defenders and struggling for the ball and yes. keep falling and mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, playing was a nice thing because it also helped some of us after school mm -hmm. to keep away from mm -hmm. the possible challenges yes. in the society, like mm -hmm. addictions to drugs yes. and uh, involving ourselves mm -hmm. in certain things. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Sports uh, generally is a good thing. Be before we get into the nitty gritties of what we are supposed to talk about today, yeah. let's talk about what has been trending the whole day yesterday, this morning, the FC Leopard's new kit. Yeah. When you look at it, you of course say, that is my team. Yes. Yeah. I was actually impressed because yeah. first of the design of, yes. of the kit, mm -hmm. and when I had um, the Dan Shikanda, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dan Shikanda saying that uh, this, is, this can be used in either of the occasions of the, the of, of our lives, either yes. as a weekend outfit or mm -hmm. on the, as the fans can use it, the players themselves. Yes. And I like that idea of commercializing, mm -hmm. making this merchandise yeah. be used for the purpose of bringing in revenue to the yes. team. That is actually a very good thing. And then now you finished playing now education, you went on to further your studies. How did it happen that you got yourself into wellness and behavior change? Because that's something that is, is an intrigue to me. I did not expect to know that there's someone who played football yeah. and knows about this subject because our players need it today more than ever. So actually what happened is that um, at the one time when I was at the national under 20 camp, yes. one of our coaches, uh, I remember that was coach Sami Nyongesa, mm -hmm. told us to remember that 
there's, there's life after football. Yes. And so uh, keeping the discipline and also having goals for your future is important. Yeah. And that's the time I got challenged and said, when I hang my boots, I, I need to get started into something that will create a future for me. Yes. And so I pursued uh, studies, I uh, pursued studies uh, in, in, in Canada, I've mm -hmm. pursued studies online as well, yeah. locally as well. And yeah, here I am, I am able to run a, 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 a company that offers this kind of services and I'm looking forward to assisting many of the players with it. Well, what, what is it that you actually do now? Just explain to us what actually you do. Yeah, mm. so basically mm. um, in wellness, uh, mm. I have been able to go on the ground mm -hmm. and meet young people who have challenges ranging from um, addictions yes. of, of drugs, and therefore, I've tried to help them understand the effects these things would have on their lives. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what are the possible uh, ways you can bring yourself out of that and start getting structure mm -hmm. for a, a life that will make you a better person at the end of the day. So that's yes. what I do mm -hmm. most of the time. I also go to um, rehabilitation and treatment centers yes. where I offer the same skills, we, mostly life skills, to mm -hmm. these people who are already into addiction treatment and help them to start getting the structure again to bring their lives back to where it can be productive and uh, helpful for them. Yeah. So that's basically the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, on the lower level where we have the under eights and 10 and up to six years, mm -hmm. we are teaching them life skills that will help them also try to understand that there is something I need to do for the sake of building a foundation mm -hmm. that will help me become a better person yeah. even when I go to high school yeah. and after high school. Yeah. So I work with uh, communities, yeah. I work with uh, school children, mm -hmm. I work with the people at the corporate level mm -hmm. and then I'm now moving to the sports arena yeah. where I'm seeing a bigger uh, 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 space yeah. to work with sports people. You know, in, 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 the, in the sports arena, that's where we I'm concerned about because that, that, is, that is actually my field. Of the players you have tried, how, how are they taking it? Because you realize here in the country, mm. our players are really frustrated. A yes. player who plays in the Kenyan Premier League is, is a frustrated player. He's yes. a player who is in a situation where he does not get his salary mm -hmm. at the specified time. Mm -hmm. He's a player who goes hungry. He's a player who is not sure about how his family is going to be tomorrow. Yes. And when we look at even their diet, these are players who finish playing, go home and take a smoke. Yes. This is something that is going to relieve them at the end of the day. Yes. These are players when you walk into our Nairobi urban life, you'll find them chewing mira at the end of the day. So how are they taking it from your end? Actually, I've dealt with two categories. The first category is players who are in institutional clubs. Uh -huh. They say yes. company, company owned, club. owned cam yes. uh, clubs. Uh -huh. And then I've dealt with this other group where it's players who are from clubs that are just funded by fans, for example. Communal, Communal club. uh, clubs. Yes. Uh -huh. So the first category, they kind of have a certain contract. Though it may not be very good, yes. but there's a certain contract where they are sure of getting something at the end of the month. Yes. And if they make it on the f of, of the first 18, at least when they go to a trip and they win the match, yeah. they can get something. Mm -hmm. But then even that group, the bottom line from that first group and this second group, there's quite a lot of stress mm -hmm. in players. Yes. And this stress for some, it has built into depression. Mm -hmm. And now this mental aspect is making them even a good player who was nice and very talented in the beginning. Yes. You give them six months into the league, mm -hmm. their performance starts going down. Mm -hmm. Why? Yes. As you mentioned, mm -hmm. one, they don't have financial support yes. that is adequate to keep them. I, I once met a player and uh, they, the first thing he asked me if I could buy them a packet of milk. They mm -hmm. had just come from training yes. and it shocked me. And then mm -hmm. uh, because I had been in this kind of situation mm -hmm. in my days of playing, yeah. I understood. Mm -hmm. And suddenly when I bought one, two others came and we, we, we sat down and yeah. they, as they took the milk. Mm -hmm. So diet is another aspect. Mm -hmm. Players are using their muscles, their energy, but yeah. they don't eat enough proteins. Mm -hmm. They don't eat adequate uh, carbohydrates. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you look at an international match, you'll see mm. most of our footballers have tiny bodies. Yes. So we don't have 
uh, good uh, dieting, mm -hmm. financial uh, support for the for the players, mm -hmm. and then one other player also got injured and they had a fracture they didn't know for a long time they were just being treated yeah. and then when the doctor decided it's a fracture and they was put on the pp the, the, the plaster yeah. um we realized that also there was no insurance to take care of this yes and so you find friends all friends who just love the game yeah. would chip in to help these players but how long can the friends do that yeah. so it's important that uh, as we go along just to answer your question is that the challenges they are facing are making the players in need of reaching out to people yeah. but even out there the people they can reach to who can understand their situation are few yes so yeah so it's a point where it's either the clubs are commercialized to make more money to help the players mm -hmm. or also we come up with what i call player uh, center uh, the uh, player centered approach yes. the player centered approach mm -hmm. where we make sure that the player is the first person we take care of before we take care of the referees uh -huh. before we take care of the uh, club yes. officials uh -huh. so that we have the player get a contract we have mm -hmm. the player get uh, an insurance even if it is nhif uh -huh. so that if yes. they have a young family they yeah. can take their child to the clinic yeah. for 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 treatment mm -hmm. and Trust me, my, my bro, mm. these players really need these things. As you have, you have also said, yeah. the challenges to do with those other things, their social life. Their social life, their yes. Their social life. Yes. You go to the workout in the morning mm -hmm. and then in the evening. Then yeah. Saturday you go and play. Yeah. What do they do during their free time? Yes. I think this is the time now we need to come in to mentor them mm -hmm. and tell them more about preparing for the future because you will not play football until you're 50. Yes. And, and as By you 30, you're done. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Mm -hmm. And if you get a fracture mm -hmm. into your 30s, it's even more worse. Mm -hmm. Healing can be very difficult. Yeah. So we, we need to come up with a situation where when they are free, we come up with programs to help mm -hmm. them, mentor them, coach them. Not the football coaching, now the life coaching aspect. Yes. And also encourage them to get involved in some kind of savings and some kind of... Um, social life activities like joining a circle, mm -hmm. uh, all that. But yeah. the player cannot join a circle if they don't have an income. Yes, they, yes. they cannot do so it. So th those are the kind of discussions mm -hmm. we need to come up mm -hmm. with so that we can take this uh, sport to another level. Well, we are here with uh, Sami Ombisa, formerly of FC Leopards, and who is now a, f a wellness coach here in the country and is working with some of the best companies here in town, Fahari Wellness company and life coaching company that's where sami works and is in in a situation where he can help players here in the country we are joining this conversation this is the touchline at y254 on social media is where you can catch this program at the moment Let, let's go on sami and now talk about education yes when you look at you you played football you had the mind to go for that education and now you're back and you want to give back to society. And you have traveled outside there in the world and you've seen how the world works. How key is education to the world of sports? That's a very nice question. Now, the first thing, even if you look at those uh, international coaches, for example, Jose Moreno and yes. all that, those coaches have an, a, 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 a master's degree mm -hmm. in coaching. Yes. They didn't just come out from nowhere and, and they are this where they are. Yeah. And so it's very important that we, as we play the game, yeah. we also look at the education aspect because once you have knowledge in your head, yeah. it can never go out. Yes, you can always move around with it. But once the football talent mm -hmm. declines because of age or because of other factors, yes. there you are stuck. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to the footballers out there and any other sports people is to just try your best. And mm -hmm. when you're going to finish your Form 4, get a grade that can take you even to the diploma at college. Yes. Level. Start yes. there. Uh -huh. I started at a diploma. Yeah. I didn't go to the degree. Uh -huh. And slowly you find, once you complete your diploma, uh -huh. you can go to your degree yeah. and you can go. And you can choose, like I chose wellness, is yeah. something that is related to what I was doing. Yes. So you can always choose courses that are related to the things you love. Uh -huh. And that is sports. That's yeah. nutrition. That's uh -huh. uh, well-being. Yeah. And so... My advice to all players, all sports people is endeavor to try and 
get yourself a grade that can just take you to a level where you can build, that will be your foundation, you build blocks on it yeah. and go up. In 10 years, like for me, the last 10 years, yeah. I've taken it for studies. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and here I am. Yes. Yes. So there's life after football. Yeah. Let's encourage our people to, mm. our players to look at it with, you know, a clear mind and, you know, it will help them. This is actually one of the best segments I've had here on the touchline. Having a former player who is actually gone to school. Sami is not alone. Some of the players who have actually made it in the world of academia and education, mostly actually even from FC Leopards. Yeah. Dr. J.J. Masiga, formerly of FC Leopards, was a captain for both Mini Machine and also FC Leopards, and he guided them both to trophies. And it was not that. We've got Dr. Danny Shikanda, who is actually a veterinarian doctor mm -hmm. here in the country. And some of those players, in our generation here, we've got the likes of Paul Kiongera earning their degrees. We've got Alan Wanga mm -hmm. of Kakamega Homeboys also going on to school. And lately, actually, also, we've got even Ronald Okoth graduating with also an international business degree here in the country. So going to school is really really very important to these players now yes you went to school but there's another one i, I have to put, ask you about and that is behavior change yes. and psychology this is another one when we talk about that everybody thinks of doctors yeah at the <laughs> medical field <laughs> but for you you're bringing it to the sports field yes. how is that working for you actually as you can look at the dynamics that are happening in the world and yes. especially in the sports field. Mm -hmm. If you take a player who is not mentally settled mm -hmm. to the ground, yes. they might not perform. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can see many teams that are very well organized, they will have even a, a sports psychologist mm -hmm. working together with the, with the team. With the team. Yes. And the, the work is very simple. We want to motivate these players mm -hmm. to be better on the ground and yeah off the ground because yes. life doesn't just end on the ground yeah so after the noise and the fans and everything you have a life that you're going to meet at home mm -hmm. so what do you do with yourself mentally and this way will help will be able to reduce the amount of stress that uh, uh, the players are going through yes and so behavior change is very important because uh, a human being transforms in stages uh -huh. so yes. you cannot continue behaving the way you used to behave when you are 16 uh -huh. uh, maybe at form 2 yes. you need to now realize that at 30 when my footballing career starts to go down yeah. I, the, the, the responsibilities that I'm expected to take on yes and therefore with a good clear mind you'll mm -hmm. be able to handle that when you are well prepared yeah yeah well, we've been talking to Sami Ombisa, who is actually here, who is a wellness coach. And also, there's one also you're talking about, live and motivational speaking. Yes. You have done it for corporates, but in sports, how is it working? In sports, we just started actually uh, after the corona, we just started before corona hit in, mm -hmm. and then we got stuck a bit. But now, since things have started showing up, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have come up with a, a structure where we want to you know, go to the clubs, mm -hmm. go to the management of the various clubs, yes. and not just football alone, mm -hmm. all sports, and yeah. now start talking to them about the importance of this. Mm -hmm. And that's why, as I mentioned earlier, apart yes. from doing a, a player-centered approach, mm -hmm. we want now to do a, a holistic program yes. that will help the club, will help the officials of the club, will help the, the, the player himself. So those three mm -hmm. pillars yes. are the ones that make the club. Yeah. So we are going to move in and, and uh, approach the clubs and mm -hmm. we, we are open. Mm -hmm. Any club that is willing to reach to us yeah. for this uh, motivational uh, and uh, behavior change mm -hmm. uh, coaching skills yeah. for, their, uh, for their footballers, for their hockey players, for their rugby players, we are ready to work with them. Uh, one thing I've got to put you on the spot is here in the country, dealing with a Kenyan player, first you have to deal with the people who run football in this country. Have you tried it with the federation? Because anytime someone comes on and wants to help the player, even if you are doing it for charity, yeah. the federation might not be happy mm -hmm. about that. They might be like, hey, this guy wants to come here and take over yeah. from what you are doing. How has been your relationship with the current football leaders in the country? Actually, I'll be very honest with you, uh, even for previous years, it's mm -hmm. not always very easy to penetrate mm -hmm. 
the federation because yeah. they have their own structure of doing things. Mm -hmm. However, even this last three months, we've had uh, a period of transition because yes. people have been preparing for elections. So it wasn't a very good time for us to approach them. Mm -hmm. But as I say, I've said earlier, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity. You know, you can only do so much. Yes, we will give them the idea. And when we realize we cannot work with the federation, we'll move to the lower tier of working with specific clubs. Yes. And as you know, some clubs have elites, as you said, for yeah. example, uh, Dr. Dan Shikanda. Mm -hmm. I doubt Dr. Dan Shikanda is one person who will say no to a good cause. So, no. uh, yes. so, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a scenario where if the federation can do it, we can do it with the clubs. Yes. We can do it with individual players. Mm -hmm. Because look at that player, for example, I mentioned who is asking you to buy them a plate of food. Mm -hmm. And yes. they are from, you know, the club. It was actually a very bad scenario. I remember we were in Machakos. I yes. Remember, we were in Machakos doing a Kenyan Premier League game, mm -hmm. and there was a team that players were going to the field of play without lunch. Yes. These players had come from home. Some of them had not even taken breakfast, mm -hmm. and they had going on to play a football match. I remember, it was a former. Harambe Stars coach Jacob Ghost Mule, yes. who was a commentator there, he was a sports commentator now. Mm -hmm. He went on to his pocket to buy food for this player so that they can go ahead and play this football match. So you can actually see how <laughs> dire that situation is. It is. Yeah. It is. And you can imagine you eating now mm -hmm. and, and scientifically you need to take some time before you engage in a vigorous activity. Yes. So even do you, you eating the food and jumping in the field will still make you not perform well. Yeah. So, and that's why I'm saying structures are very important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, dialogue and talking and uh, working together is the only way. Yeah. If a federation or if a club thinks they want to continue doing things the same way, we shall just admire uh -huh. our yes. African countries like, yeah. you see, Ghana, mm -hmm. Nigeria. And the, we don't say they don't have problems. Mm -hmm. But the player-centered approach is very important. Start with the player. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep 40 players if you can't yes. pay them. Yes. Why don't you have a good outfit of 28 players mm -hmm. and take good care of them? Yeah. Yes. Talking of wrangles, yes. and when you talk about 2003, when you are at the prime of your career with FC Leopards, that is also the time when Kenyan football was at its peak when it came to football wrangles. Yes. Day in, day out, we had court cases. If it was not <laughs> Sam Nyamwea forming Football Kenya Limited, it was Mohamed Hatimi. Yes. Sam Nyamwea says it's Kenya Football Federation now. Mm -hmm. Mohamed Hatimi comes with Football Kenya Limited. It was a tug of war yes. and came about the formation of the Kenya Premier League. Exactly. Now you are hearing that the contract is over and Kenya Premier League is going back to the <laughs> Football Kenya Federation. Do you see that one materializing to something good or is just something bad we are expecting at the end of the day? I, I can tell you for, for free, yeah. if the approach is going to be the same, we'll continue having the same problems. Yes. Whether it is Sami Mbisa on that, <laughs> on that position or yes. whether it's you. Mm -hmm. So the approach must be changed and we, we, we need, that's why I'm saying we need to talk mm -hmm. and we need to to even change our mindset. Everything mm -hmm. starts with the mindset. Yes. Is the player important? Yes or no? Yes. If it's no, mm -hmm. then can we have a federation of officials alone? Mm -hmm. Now, coming on to changing the mind, yes. also comes on with the changing of the culture yes. and all that. And you look at a situation where we are here in Kenya, you look at a situation where I saw an article today, someone talking about uh, a South African company, Malte, is uh, planning to take over the EP, the rights of the Ethiopian yes. Premier League. There are also rumors going around that they might go to the Tanzanian Premier League because they're attracting funds. Yes. They were here at home and they left mm -hmm. because we do not take care of that chance. Yes. Now, also for the funds, can they change? Can we change in that we can wake up in the morning on Saturday? We don't care about EPL, what is happening in La Liga, but say it is Saturday, 4 p.m., we are going to an FC and Gormaya match and Nyaya will be full packed. Yes. Can the fan change yes. also? Yes, the fan can change. And mm. look here, a fan is looking at the leadership. <laughs> yes. So if the leadership has a problem, the fan will also not be motivated because the fan is paying his own money. Yes. And at the end of the day, he knows he's going to pay maybe 300 as entry fee 
and uh, will, they will only hear that their players have continued to stay hungry when the officials have received the money. So that's also a problem that the fans, as they want to change, they are looking at the leadership. Yes. So leadership is the beginning point. Mm -hmm. Then it flows down to all the other levels. Yeah. Now, we talked about the mindset. Yes. Mindset can only change if you start looking at things in a different way. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect mm -hmm. good results if you continue doing things the same way you've done every other year. Mm -hmm. And like now we are going to have new officials. I don't know who will win or who will be yes. going to that office. Mm -hmm. I think this is the right time now also support of government needs to come in. Uh -huh. yes. yes, government also needs to say, okay, fine. We have athletics doing very well. We have, uh, you know, how many gold medals do we have or gold uh, trophies do we have that have come from foot football? Since the years now, it's it's long. It's long. It's very long. Yeah. But even this morning, you, we've just watched what is happening in Doha. Yes. So if we want to see the same in football, we don't want a case where our uh, winners of the Premier League mm -hmm. just go and play an international match, mm -hmm. and you you you're put in the same draw with an, with an Arab country, mm -hmm. and you come back home with four goals, mm -hmm. and we keep blaming the the referees. We keep blaming, mm -hmm. but. Where did we t did it start uh, going wrong? Yes. It has started ro going wrong in the leadership aspect. Yes. This player is going to board the plane, mm -hmm. but the family who has just a, 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 a new wife and a baby in the house, yeah. he's not even sure whether there is money at home to take care of mm -hmm. those people. Yes. So I repeat again, leadership mm -hmm. is the starting point. Mm -hmm. We will try to talk mm -hmm. to these people yeah. and see whether we can work together because without a good leadership, we'll go back to the same, same problems. Yeah. Mm. Finally, how can people find you? Because now there's something new that people need to learn and know about. Yes. How can people find you? Just tell us where people can find you and also your companies. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, you can find me through um, the internet. If you log in to uh, Fahari Wellness and Life Coaching, you'll see our contacts. Um, you'll see the website. And uh, you can also reach to me personally through my uh, Safaricom number. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always open to receive all those requests. Uh, should I mention yeah, the number? You, you so you, my number is 0723-030-244. And also I work with, in partnership with organizations like the, the Canopy uh, Treatment Center, which mm -hmm. is helping people some who have been in sports who are now into drugs mm -hmm. to get them out of drugs and receive treatment. Mm -hmm. I've also work, I also partner with the um, uh, Kenya Institute of Business and Counseling, KIPCO, mm -hmm. yes. which is also offering the same uh, through uh, Niche Wellness Limited. Mm -hmm. So Niche Wellness Limited is also uh, a place where I sit on the management and there we are able to reach out to the various people especially now that we are targeting the sports fraternity mm -hmm. we want to help the sports people more mm -hmm. again i repeat my number is 0723030244 yeah thanks a lot sami for coming to the touchline here on y254 hopefully we can host you again and talk about this more because it's a new field for sports here in the country. Thank you so much. We have been talking to Sami Mbisa, formerly of FC Leopards, who is now heading for Harry Wellness. Uh, it's a consultancy company where they deal with wellness, behavior change, psychology for the player and for the future of players. So if you need motivation, there's nowhere other than Y254, and this is where you can get guests like Samuel Bisa to give you that. Now, that's where we come to the end of this segment. Let's go to a break with what happened in the UEFA Super Cup as Bayern Munich came from one goal down to win 2-1 in extra time to lift their fourth trophy this season and also their second treble in their history. It is Bayern Munich and also their anthem because... It is Bayern and they are the champions of Europe.